welcome to Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review. I'm Zoe. And I'm Kelsey. And we're here today to talk about a book that we picked from our Governess Trope List episode. And I can't believe it took us however many episodes, list episodes that we did to finally realize we should be picking a book from it. <laughs> I know, right? That was our brilliant stroke of genius. I Again, I think it's really funny because every time we've done those lists, especially if we had one we had, we're like, oh, that sounds really interesting. We should read that. Yeah, we should have. And we should have talked about it on the podcast. And we're doing that today. And I am so glad we did. Yes. And I am also introducing a new thing on the podcast, which is New Author November. Yes. Yes, because this was a new author for both of us. Strangely enough, we know she's like a giant in the genre, and yet neither one of us read her books before. You know, there are so <laughs> many books to read, and sometimes like you just kind of like miss something. And it's really great when it gets in your path and kind of shows you what everyone was talking about. <laughs> yes. And then we also have um, our next book this month is a patron pick. Yay. Mm -hmm. And that was an author too that neither one of us had read. So I decided we should put them together and have new author November. I am so excited for that. I'm like, super excited for next November. It's going to be hard as we're planning out our episodes to like be like, wait a minute, we should we should hold that we one until hold November. Off, hold till November. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it's really interesting because, I mean, we read new authors all the time, but I think it's also a nice time to dedicate yes. time to new authors. So now we know for sure, even if next year, whatever we decide to do, whether it's favorites, whatever, we'll talk more about that another time. Mm-hmm maybe later today, um, <laughs> about how we're going to plan next year. But regardless of that, in November, we will read something new to us. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that is an important distinction, right? This is new authors to us and slash the podcast. Um, authors that we have not highlighted or really are familiar with. Doesn't necessarily mean they're new to the scene or this is their first book because that is certainly not the case with Amanda Quick, but it is new to us, new to the podcast, and hopefully something new to you guys. Yes. So today, based on our governess read, we decided to go with the one that flipped the trope a little bit. Yes. So we had a male tutor and a female employer. And so today we're reading Deception by Amanda Quick. And as this is the first time that we are reading in Amanda Quick, we do have her biography for you all. So the author of a string of New York Times bestsellers, Jane Ann Krentz, uses three different pen names to write each of her three worlds. As Jane Ann Krentz, her married name, she writes contemporary romantic suspense. She uses Amanda Quick for her novels of historical romantic suspense. Jane Castle, her birth name, is reserved these days for her stories of futuristic, paranormal, romantic suspense. Is Jane Castle not the best name ever? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, all of the, all of them are fantastic. And I just like that that was her name. Also, she spells it Jane, J-A-Y-N-E, which I think just makes it even better. Mm -hmm. She says, quote, I am often asked why I use a variety of pen names, she says. The answer is this, is that this way readers always know which of my three worlds they will be entering when they pick up one of my books. In addition to her fiction writing, she is the editor of and a contributor to a nonfiction essay collection, Dangerous Men and Adventurous Women, Romance Writers on the Appeal of Romance, published by the University of Pennsylvania Press. Her commitment to her chosen genre has been strong from the very beginning of her career. Quote, the romance genre is the only genre where readers are guaranteed novels that place the heroine at the heart of the story, Jane says. These are books that celebrate women's heroic virtues and values, courage, honor, determination, and a belief in the healing power of love. She earned a BA in history from the University of California at Santa Cruz and went on to obtain a master's degree in library science from San, San Jose State University in California. Oh, my neck of the woods. <laughs> Before she began writing full time, she worked as a librarian in both academic and corporate libraries. She is married and lives with her husband, Frank, in Seattle, Washington. 
And there is a Faded Mates interview with her this year, which is part of their Trailblazer series that was from January of this year. So you should check that out if you want to hear straight from her yourself. I think you absolutely should. I love her quote about the female heroines and heroic virtues and values, courage, honor, determination, and and a belief in the healing power of love. Ah, It's very good. So perfect. And yeah, I believe her books kind of all are intertwined, even though the worlds are all separate. I believe there is some sort of like interlacing. Like if you read her contemporary versus her historical, there are like Easter eggs in them. I, okay. I can't I can't be a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that I read that somewhere or someone told me. Anyhow, shall we talk about our tropes today? Let us talk about our tropes today. So today we have, as mentioned before, a teacher-employer role reversal trope. Mm. We have mistaken identity. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that is 100% mistaken identity. And marriage of convenience. And our favorite, secret treasure map. Mm-hmm. And our main characters are Jared Ryder, Viscount Chillhurst, and Miss Olympia Wingfield. Yes. Well, Kelsey, shall we get into it? We shall. So we start with a prologue that tells us that Jared Ryder is the opposite of his family and has no interest in the buried treasure of his ancestors. However, his family is, and that is why he is speaking with the man who bought his great-great-grandmother's, or so, maybe it's one more great? I don't know. There's a (laughs) lot of greats there. Diary, which is said to hold the key to the treasure map. The man bought it for his niece, who loves old languages and code breaking, which explains the journal to a T. However, the journal is already in the ship's cargo hold. Luckily, Jared owns the ship the man is using. He tells his father and uncle that he will travel with the cargo the man is shipping back to his niece and offer for the diary when he gets there. No subterfuge. He literally just plans to follow the cargo, tell her the story, and buy the diary from her. Now we jump to Olympia Wingfield, who is a blue-stocking spinster and quite happy that way. However, she does now have the custodianship of three nephews who keep running off every tutor she hires for them. When Jared meets Olympia, he is struck by a connection he wants to pursue. So instead of introducing himself by his title and telling her why he's really there, he tells her that yes, he is in fact a tutor hired by her uncle for the boys. And thus, he is drawn into the household that is anything but dull. He personally cannot abide chaos, as he's kind of like a captain sort, and does his best to establish a bit more order in the house. But it soon becomes clear the house needs more from him than that. Turns out the neighbor who was meant to help Olympia sell her uncle's cargo in London has been giving her less than 10% of its actual worth and pocketing the money for himself. Then the same man's wife threatens to have Olympia's nephews taken from her because she is clearly unfit to trust a man who looks more like a pirate than her husband, the squire. Yes, perhaps we should mention that Jack Ryder wears an eye patch. Oh yeah, he's got one eye (laughs) from a fight from back in the day. He's a very rugged sort. Yes. That takes everyone to London, where it is soon revealed that Jared is no tutor and in fact a Viscount. Due to a rather inopportune meeting with his ex fiance Jared introduces Olympia as his wife. So, of course, they must get married for real now. This is where things get wild, because it turns out that the ex fiancés family are descendants of the man who was originally partners with Jared's ancestor, the one Ooh. who hid the treasure. There's an old feud, and the ex-fiancé's brother thinks it's very unfair that his family is practically destitute while Jared's is rich. What he doesn't realize is that without Jared, the family would have been in the same boat. Yes, Jared is the orderly moneymaker of the family. (laughs) Now, things get sticky when it turns out that Jared's right-hand man, Felix, has been embezzling funds due to a gambling problem and is now trying to also harm Jared. At one point, he even tries to kidnap one of the nephews in an effort to extort money from Jared. After breaking into the house and threatening Olympia, Felix is finally stopped with a very manly show of strength from Jared and all's well that ends well. Jared's ex fiance's family agrees with Jared to move past the feud and a small party consisting of members of both families plan to set out after the treasure. 
Jared has no interest in going. In fact, he wants to be with Olympia and the special kind of chaos she attracts. Well, that is a very annotated summary of this. Sorry, wild guys, ride. we're trying this new thing where we write really short summaries. So tell us what yes, you think. Yes. Because that's actually important because yes. it takes a lot of time for us to write the really detailed summaries. And a lot of time that prevents us from getting through these episodes really quickly because it just takes so much time. Mm hmm to write them. Yeah. And I'm not sure that that's what you guys come here for. I think the I I love a good summary, like to remind me of the book or to tell me if maybe I want to get into the book. But I think we're trying to find that sweet spot of how much of a summary is the right amount of summary. <laughs> so, exactly. So this one was definitely on the more brief side. There was no added quotes in. There was mm -hmm. no anything um, it's just a real bare bones of the summary. There's a lot of fun details that did take place in this that I did not cover. But yeah. let us know what you think. Because if yes. this is what you guys like, and this is fine, then that makes my life a lot easier. And we can do it this way. <laughs> yes. And also now I'm like super jazzed to talk about this book. So shall we first adjourn to the parlor? We shall. Well, listeners, thank you so much for joining us here in the parlor today. I just want to briefly mention our Patreon. As we said last episode, we hit our first goal and we are going to be launching some new goals. They're not 100% finalized, but I do want to mention that our next goal is definitely going to be um, community-based. So right now we are so thrilled to have 19 patrons. Like, can you believe it? I'm I cannot believe it. It's so special. Thank all of you for being our patrons and helping us put the show on. I mean, I think that for us, we were really getting to a point where we weren't – we saw we had listeners, but we weren't really sure if anyone was listening and cared. <laughs> so um, it was. it's just been so great to have your support and your appreciation. It's really kind of helped breathe new life into the show. So yeah, I mean, really appreciate it. I think I've said it so many times. Podcasting feels like shouting out into a big void sometimes. And um, – it's a time consuming and kind of expensive hobby. And so like just to have a little bit of your support is, is it's more than the dollars that you're giving, right? Like it's, it gives us so, um, so much encouragement and we just so appreciate it. So on that note, our next goal is definitely going to be, like I said, community based. So when we have 25 patrons, we're going to be doing something. We don't have it totally finalized what we're doing, but if you want to be one of those, six next patrons, you can join us on Patreon for as little as $3 a month. So head on over to patreon.com slash T as in Tom and as in Nancy Strumpets to explore all our tiers and become one of our patrons. Yes. And if you are a new patron and have yet to receive your patron perks, I'm working on it. <laughs> We've had a busy couple of months, and but we really do appreciate you all. And if you want to find us elsewhere, you can find us on Instagram at T as in Tom and as in Nancy Strumpets. I'm going to be honest, we might not be on Twitter anymore. <laughs> yeah, the Twitter's kind of fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Mainly because I got in charge of the social media. And no lie, guys, I'm really bad at social media. Well, I have some, I have some opinions and thoughts and feelings about Twitter at this moment. Um, I think so everybody I does. <laughs> so I don't see us really going pushing pushing that uh, to be anything more than it it is right now which is an automatic tweet that our episode has come up uh, but you can also find us on facebook slash t and strumpets and youtube at t isn't tom and is a nancy strumpets we're everywhere with the same name yes so exciting youtube finally let us get our own handle <laughs> yes and if you're listening to us on youtube now's a great time to click that thumbs up and hit subscribe before you forget liking and commenting on our videos and subscribing to our channel is a really wonderful way to let us know you like what we're doing and if you'd like to know ahead of time what we're reading each month subscribe to our email notifications via our website if you subscribe you'll be the first to know what we're reading each month plus you'll get all sorts of extras including exclusive content from each of the authors who join us on the podcast our website is romancepod.com and there you can find episodes more information about us and other resources so take a look
All right. So Kelsey, general thoughts about this book. So this book was really fun. Like Really fun. It was really fun. I definitely saw the age of it in mm-hmm. like I think it's interesting because it, it's just in the way it was written. You yeah. know, and it's so interesting too. I so I tried to pick up this side note but more on that topic of how books are written and what speaks to you, because I think that's maybe why I haven't gone to read some of her books because the writing is a little bit dated. It's Uh not old language. It's not like Jane Austen or anything, but it's a little dated as far as how the scenes are set, the writing of it. Uh But I picked up a newer contemporary like romance novel and Uh oh my God, I couldn't, I got like two chapters in and I was like, I can't, I can't. Of hers? Uh, No, no, not of hers, of like some other authors. Because the writing was literally like a cheesy rom-com like on the Mm -hmm. Hallmark channel. And I was like, I would be into this if that's what I came to, if I was watching it, then the language and the setting of it would make more sense. Yeah. But because I was reading it in a book, I was like, I can't, I can't. So then I picked up Eva Lee's new novel and I read it voraciously and I was like, ah, oh, happy place. Yes. <laughs> um, so I definitely, it took a minute. I mean, it took the prologue to kind of get into the vibe of it mm-hmm. simply because, like I said, the language is a little older, very descriptive. It almost, it's funny because I think when I read these older books, there's almost a bit more gravitas to the way I read it. Mm -hmm. like it's just the way it flows in my brain it doesn't it's not the same clip i think as like a modern or not a modern but as like a today's romance novel even a regency i feel like they kind of come in with a nice clip versus this one was like i need to set the scene yeah there's an old family legend i i actually thought of that too when i was reading this that this was a little bit older and i wanted to because she's still writing tons Mm -hmm. She's still writing tons, and I wanted to see if there was something new that came out from her. But her newest historical series is, like, 1920s. It's not, like, the Victorian oh, okay. age. So mm-hmm. um, they look beautiful and amazing, but I'm just, like, I'm stuck in the past. Okay, sorry, I was a car. <laughs> You're a stuck in the past past. I'm stuck in the past past. 1920s is just too current for me. <laughs> um, so, so I didn't get to read that because I am curious. I'm just, like – you know, any author that's been writing for over 20 years, your writing evolves with the times, yeah, you know, if you're successful, mm-hmm. <laughs> which she most definitely is. So, um, so in that respect, I was hoping for that, but there, but it wasn't. However, so there were definitely some like kind of antiquated things about this book. And I just have to say though, I loved this book. I wrote very few notes as I was reading it. You said love in the afternoon set you off on just a reading like trail, Mm -hmm. right? And this book set me off on a reading trail. Before this, this was like the first book that I read after having a baby. And I just like, I couldn't stop. I have now read, hold on, let me count right now. One, two, oh, no, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Amanda Quicks. Wow. (laughs) Dang. Since uh, July 26th. So, um, and I mean, like, look, it's, it's like, July 26th. Then the next one I started July 26th. Then the next one I started, or sorry. Yeah. I read Deception in a day. And then I read the next one like in two days and literally just like day after day, four or five books. And then I took a little break and came back. But like, um, I definitely found some of them to be incredible. Um, I think my favorite ones have been, well, I'm looking at my star ratings here, Ravished and Mistress. I liked a li- even a little bit more than this one. Um, I thought they were interesting tropes. Um, and then there were also some bonkers ones, absolutely <laughs> think, bonkers. Were you telling me about one of those bonkers yes. one the other day? <laughs> It's the one about Zamar, ancient oh, Zamar, yeah. like this oh, fake yeah, civilization. Yeah. It's absolutely bonkers. But it's the kind of bonkers that's still written really well and you just like can't turn away. You can't stop reading. Like it's so good. Anyhow, there's a there's a review. Maybe I'll read it at the end uh, for that one. But to talk about deception, I loved the flipped trope of the um the the tutor, you know, the male tutor. And I will say he was almost not full Mary Poppins, but he was 
almost a Mary yes. Poppins esque because uh-huh. it's like the unruly boys, and like with a quick look and a word, he like has them enraptured, and she's mm-hmm. like, "What is this man that like fixes everything? I need him in my life. I need yes. to run away to London to protect my nephews, but obviously he's coming with me." And I love too that even after my favorite thing is even after she found out he was a viscount, yeah, she kept bringing up that she's like, "Well." I'm still your employer. He's like, are you? Mm-hmm. Are you? <laughs> but she's I loved just like, her, though. <laughs> but no, she was just like, well, you're my employee. And as my employee, you need to do this. And he's like, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought so, it was hilarious. So, but back kind of to the, the kind of old style of it. There was one thing, and you know me, if I read something in a book where it's like repeated over and over and over again, yeah, yeah, it yeah, definitely yeah. sticks out in my mind. Do mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about in this one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, woman of the world. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, yes. Oh my god, that's hilarious because he's actually been around the world and she's like, I'm a woman of the world. I've read about the world in my library. Yes. And I'm and okay, but t- it it's in this book 21 times. Yeah, no, it was said a lot. <laughs> that was definitely said a lot for sure. And and then reading more Amanda Quicks, in some of them, it seemed like it was in all of her books, to be honest. And then as some of the later ones, it kind of it, – it stayed away. And he, there was a man of the world said every now and then too. So mm-hmm. it's definitely probably like – I, I can kind of imagine that it was, you know, too much in the beginning and then it became maybe a joke for her and then she kind of kept it as like an Easter egg, you know, yeah. sort of thing. Um, and I thought it was fun. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting after reading a lot of Amanda Quicks and in this one too, I believe it's in this one, um, there's some relationship that uh, – there seems to be a female-female relationship. Like there's yes. two aunts or something or two – No, there was the two aunts. So in this book, um, Olivia was raised by two aunts. One mm-hmm. was her actual aunt and the other one was her aunt's partner. Yes. And and it- then the – and then there was the ex-fiance who we actually – so yes. it turns out – he broke it off with the ex-fiance because – and he just refers to catching her with a lover. Mm-hmm. But it was because her lover was what everyone just assumes is her best friend, another married woman. So yeah. like – and it's it's funny because the brother thinks that Chillhurst made things up and he's like, she would never. Like, you just wanted to get out of it. Like, yeah, how dare you? He's so mad at Chillhurst for like ditching his sister. And then it comes – and then – but it's because his sister never told him, I like women. He yeah. caught me with a woman was clearly like, yeah, this isn't going to work as a marriage, even a marriage of like normal society marriage. This isn't going to work. Well, this was written in 1993. Like, so we've been like, scra- you know, calling out for more diversity and some representation and showing that the historical world wasn't all just straight people or straight white people or white people or, you know, like mm-hmm. – and she's just always been doing it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so I feel, I feel like, you know, I feel a little silly because it's like, it's been there. There have been people, obviously, that's why Faded Mates calls her a trailblazer because she's been setting the trail for so long. Mm-hmm. And it's just there and it's in all her books. She always has a little hint of the world is not just straight or white you know, in her, Mm -hmm. in her settings. And I so appreciate that. She also like, as, as we said in her bio, she does this kind of like romantic suspense or whatnot. So all her books have some sort of subplot other than just the falling in love. So a lot of the time they fall in love about halfway and their, you know, their troubles from that are fine. But then you get this other climax of like the subplot. So if it's like finding the treasure or it's, somebody's trying to murder them or there's like a or ghost both. something yeah. yeah or both it's and it's such a fun ride like i've been having so, i had so much fun with all these books i'm just like yes they're in love and now they're going to save the day and get the murderer i like- l- i do say i always like when like the third act of the romance is not the third act of some misunderstanding or some miscommunication it is in fact an outside source that mm-hmm. they need to work then together and that's what's really cements the 
relation, like they love each other, but then going through the trials of this outside force that they had Mm -hmm. no control over, or they are working together towards a common good. And that is really what cements their relationship. Or that's kind of what maybe causes a little tension they have to work through. Like, I always appreciate that lot, a lot more than like a misunderstanding was one thing with the Eva Lee that I just read. And in the third act, there was like a misunder like it wasn't a misunderstanding. They misunderstanding, but they said it and then they kept away from each other for three days because they were so worried the other one was hurt. And I was like, I'm over it. Get over it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit deeper about our hero and heroine. So our hero, as we said, Jared, he's this like captain and the leader of his family. He thrives on it. order because his, they are all so crazy. <laughs> and I love it. His family calls him the black sheep of the family because yeah. he's... Damn it. She's going to wake the baby. Hold on. Okay. Can you get her? Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, the I, I love how he's um the white sheep in a family of black sheep yeah like he they keep referring to him as an un like he's just not passionate the whole family is passionate and he just doesn't follow his passions and olivia the entire time is like he is a very passionate man he yes. really needs to control his passions yes and it's, it's so almost funny hilarious. because his, his dad is like are we talking about the same person <laughs> Yeah. And even yeah. Jared, when she's like, you're a very passionate man, he's like, no, I'm really not. And she's like, but you are. <laughs> yeah. And you'd think that he would not want a woman who is kind of as uh, chaotic good, for mm-hmm. lack of a better term, uh, yeah. as, as Olympia. But he just he just falls for her so hard. He like he, he you know, you'd think that he wouldn't want someone that he has to like, you know, hold you know, hold the, the late, tighten the laces for, right? Yeah. Like to keep her together. But no, he loves that. He thrives on it. <laughs> no, However, he does. she also reciprocates. And mm-hmm. so like she is kind of what this like quirky, absent minded, brilliant, um, uh, researcher for, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they just, they just fit. <laughs> they just do. Cause she's really like wonderfully kind. And again, like he yes. doesn't. He and perceptive. Sees, and perceptive. And she's kind and perceptive. And he sees that and her, like, intellect. And he's, like, immediately intrigued by her. And mm-hmm. then is, like, I want to stick around. The best way I can stick around is to, like, ease her path and make things easier for her. Mm-hmm. Because, like, she's just got so much going on in her brain. Like, I'm just going to make sure she doesn't step off the cliff too much, like, too many times. Like, I'll just ease her back, you know? And he likes, and but again, he loves that. Like he loves that. That's the role he can play in her life. He likes that she kind of gets him a little fired up, which like he didn't used to. But he like she is the one person who can actually fire him up about things, which is new for him and interesting. Yeah, I have a quote actually here that is in the first ten percent of the book. It's with a breathtaking, completely uncharacteristic disregard for common sense. He had consigned the Lightborn Diary to hell. A mundane business arrangement was the very last thing he wanted to enter in with Olympia. Indeed, he could not bear the thought. He wanted her, wanted her. Once that blazing realization had struck him, all that had seemed important was that he'd discover a way to stay here in the vicinity of this enchanting siren. He needed to explore this fierce, powerful, passionate attraction if it was the last thing he did on earth. I mean, that's how they feel about each other. I love it. (laughs) Yes. Um... But it also, one thing about his character, I like this quote from only 4% in the book. It seems to Jared that he was forever rescuing one member of his family or another. Sometimes when he sat up late at night making notes in his appointment journal, he wondered fleetingly if someone would ever come along to rescue him. Aw. Yeah. And Olivia does. So anyhow, what would you – how about this? I'll go first. I want to rate Jared an 8. I really liked him. I thought he was just fun and – great i think he's an eight (laughs) i would say he's he's at least an eight like yeah maybe a little bit more because i really did like him and he really had nothing i didn't like about him all right fine you're right 8.5 at least (laughs) (laughs) no he was he was really great like honestly he was really great and there was nothing he didn't have like secret macho tendencies like he was very much like he yeah. was very much who he was and, like, didn't, like, say – but he genuinely was a good person, I guess is what I'm trying to say, too. Like, 
There wasn't like he was great except for this. He was just kind of like a really fantastic guy. <laughs> yes. Now, Olympia, we've already talked to about a little bit, and I have a quote here to kind of go with her. Um, uh, uh, and th- this, these are two two separate quotes, but very, very Olympia that'll maybe give her a little bit of spice. So mm-hmm. what about your reputation? Mrs. Norbury piped up anxiously. A movement at the corner of Olympia's eye caught her attention. She turned her head and saw that Jarrett was leaning very casually in the doorway. He smiled slightly at her. My reputation is my concern, Mrs. Norbury, Olivia said bluntly. Do not bother yourself about it. No one else has bothered about it for the past several years, and I have gotten along just fine. And as soon afterwards, she says, I don't give, I do not give a fig for my reputation. Olivia clasped her hands very tightly in front of her. Aunt Sophie always said that a reputation was nothing more than the world's opinion and the world was frequently wrong. The most, the important thing was one's honor. And she made it clear that that was a private matter between oneself and one's conscience. I am not the least concerned about what Miss Pettigrew thinks of me. Hmm. Yeah. You go, girl. You go, girl. And Aunt Sophie. Yeah. Yeah. She was really, she was fierce in her own little way. And Mm -hmm. like, I liked almost the, I'm a woman of the world, but I know nothing of the world. Like, she very was like a bit naive in a lot of ways, but was still very secure in her knowledge. And um, really, she just was, she was really, I really liked her too. Honestly, I had nothing against her. I think she's an 8.5 also. What a great couple these two are. <laughs> yeah. I just, this book was so fun for me. So then we've got our favorite quote. Shall I go first while I have my quotes pulled up here? Yes, you do that. And I will pull mine up. Um, I'm going to take one from the end of the book that has nothing to do with either of them since I already talked about them. Um mm-hmm. And it's just that um, this is Jared's uncle or father. One, they, they're both there, and I can't remember which one is which. But um, Olivia's off, kind of pulling away from something, and someone says, "What is going on here?" "Damn if I know," Magnus said cheerfully. "The lass has got the wind in her sails. We're me- merely following in her wake." <laughs> <laughs> but- I just loved like this piratey reference towards the end, and yeah, it's so good. And anyhow, so mine also has nothing to do with either of the characters. I just thought it was a really descriptive piece of writing describing another character and I just really liked it so Mm -hmm. I highlighted it I think that's literally all I highlighted I highlighted a few like good descriptions and that was about it I have very little highlights on this I was just too busy reading anyway so the quote is Graves was suitably named Jared thought the man was tall stoop-shouldered and cavernously thin he wore the perpetually doleful expression of an undertaker. Jared had chosen him after interviewing several candidates from Bow Street because of the gleam of canny intelligence in the man's eye. Mm. Like you can just like picture the person. Yes. I just thought it was like very descriptive and like I just really liked it. Yes. I have one more little one that's between the two of them, Olivia Olympia and Jared, and they're kind of at odds. And <laughs> this is like what you were saying with her being his employer, right? And saying mm-hmm. that. That is quite enough. Olympia stormed the rest of the way across the room to stand directly in front of the desk. I believe you are being deliberately difficult, sir. Quite possibly, he says. (laughs) I am in a difficult mood. (laughs) I just love the two of them. Oh, wait. I have a really great, I think, that encapsulates both people and this, both characters of this book. All right. Tell me it. Okay. It's a longer quote. This is Jared starting out. I will do what I think best, and I will make decisions accordingly. You will obey those decisions, madam. Olympia's mouth fell open. I will do no such thing, not unless I happen to agree with those decisions, and I do not happen to agree with your edict regarding Mr. Seaton. Damnation, Olympia, I am your husband. You will do as I tell you. I will do as I bloody well please, just as I always do- just as I have always done. <laughs> Olympia stormed. She heard the library door open behind her, but she paid no attention. You will listen to me, Mr. Chilhurst, and you will pay close attention. Do not forget that I took you on as a tutor in this household. When all is said and done, it seems obvious to me that you are still in my, you are still in my employ. That is a nonsensical thing to say, Jared shot back. You are my wife, not my employer. (laughs) (laughs) I just love the two of them. But this is what I meant about, like, she's just constantly like, I'm your employer. He's like, we're married. No, you're not. (laughs) 
All right. And so now we are to our steaminess rating and our encounter counter. And we're also joined by a special guest. So if you hear some noises, uh, Evie is with us now just for our, our finish up. Hopefully, hopefully you can help let us finish the rest of the podcast, little lady. What do you think? We'll find out. She always <laughs> likes to make things difficult in my presence. <laughs> um, yes. So for our encounter counter, uh, we're wondering if it's two or three. Both Zoe and I forgot to count. And we forgot to count. We're sorry. So there's there's at least one or two in there for sure. For sure one or two. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like it was st- – perfectly steamy like it was just like a nice cup of tea yeah no perfectly steamy nothing like crazy raunchy nothing like crazy hot and spicy but like definitely like could not resist the woman in the library which oh yeah enough i do remember the library scene (laughs) and i enjoy a good library scene all right feminist recap oh total supporter yeah for a 90s book too i mean obviously like they're in in every decade that most you know, the good authors are trying to be feminist, but I felt like this was really great. I love her. The, I love all the, you know, um, gay relationship representation. But she also, I loved Olympia's Olymp- yeah. whole attitude. Like it was great. No. And Olympia really, like she took charge of her life. Um, I think that last quote I said really encompassed that in the sense of oh, yeah. like her, like Jared's literally trying to protect her. And she's like, I think you're being dumb. So, yeah. like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and and I read her other books. I I love that these women get to go on the adventures with uh with the men, and they're just vital parts of the story. Yeah, yes, they are. Oh no! Oh no! Sadness. Let's bounce a little because we're getting to our final book rating. And aren't you excited to tell everybody what you think of the book? This was read while I was nursing you. Oh, my gosh. So great. Uh, I think this book is definitely on the 8.5 level. So Me too. I just – I think this is – this book is not perfect, but I love it. Yeah. No, for sure. I think that it's – uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I think for our first foray into Amanda Quick, it was quite good. Um, there wasn't any it silly. It certainly set me off. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it was, I mean, it had all the things that I originally loved about a lot of romance novels that I would read a lot of. You know, I love a romance novel. I mean, it harkens back to our first episode of the podcast and our Julianne Long, where he's like, you know, escaping the gallows and there's like an yeah. extra plot against his life and a secret family history, you know? Like, those are the books I think that we got hooked into. So it was kind of nice to come back to that. I think that a lot of books are being more like rom-com, tongue-in-cheek, um, which I love. But at the same time, too, I love a crazy adventure story. And I love yes. that that's what we got with this. Yes, I can't agree more. I'm so glad we read it. I'm so glad we have our new new author November now. And um, I just, yeah, I can't wait to read more Amanda Quick. Again, the Zamar book, which one is that one? Uh, I would love to read this review. Maybe I'll put it in at the end of the episode. Maybe I'll read it uh, separately yeah. when I'm, when I'm uh, editing it. Because, man, that review from... Let me at least get the name of the book. It's called Mischief. The book Mischief is just absolutely bonkers. And oh, the review... you know what? You should put the review on our Patreon. Yes, I will do that. And the review um, from Goodreads user Roxana is just the most hilarious thing I've ever read. So um, check it out, listeners. Sorry, I think I got a little far away from my mic. If uh, some of the sound didn't wasn't as the same recently. Well, there is a baby in the way, so. <laughs> Kelsey, what are we reading next? Time? Next time we are reading A Duke in the Night by Kelly Bowen. Um, this was a Patreon pick, and I have like looked at Kelly Bowen's book. I've looked at Kelly Bowen's books. I'd never picked one up before. I think often because the covers were just a little too cheesy for me. And I know you're not supposed to judge a book by the cover, but I definitely do from time to time, especially if it's something new I haven't read before. I definitely have been like my decision to pick it up has definitely been made or broken by the cover. So mm. I was pleasantly surprised and I proceeded to read all the books in this little like trilogy of hers. <laughs> yes. Well, on this note, I think it's time that we say thank you very much for listening. This was so fun to talk about and read, and I cannot wait 
for our next episode where we read A Duke in the Night by Kelly Bowen. And may all your ever afters end happily. Happily.